backup strap seems to be loose. Seems to be enjoying herself, don't you think? Don't worry about that. She fell in love with the idea just from hearing us talk. And that's about all we've talked about since she was born. Living on a farm. Well, I hope it makes it up to you for all your sacrifices. All I did was wait and save while you worked at a job you didn't like in a city you hated. Well, that's all over now. We're home. Trudy, come on back now. Judy? Oh, it's wonderful. Which one's mine? In the rear. And you'll have a room of your very own, too. I don't mean that. I mean, which horse is mine? Oh, the little one. Oh, I love him. Can I ride him now, Papa? Can I? Oh, there's plenty of time for that later. First, I want to show you the house. Howdy, Uncle Dan. Aunt Jane. Just that. I can see that. Len, this is Trudy. Trudy, this is Len. He's a cousin of yours. Gonna help me with the work around here. Hello, little girl. Hello. Anything special happen while I was gone? Uh, nothing much. An old sheep herder come by asking for grub. I run him off. Well, the next time anyone asks for food, feed him. Anything else? Well, old man Barton's been hanging around. What do you mean, hanging around? Uh, he's been sort of riding around, looking things over like... Like maybe he was considering buying the place. Please, Pop, I want to ride my horse. You promised. Well, as long as you're not interested in the house, all right, Trudy. Saddle up the pony, will you, Lynn? For her? <laughs> What's she know about riding? Well, she took lessons in the city. See, Smarty. Well, can't do more than one thing at a time. Well, you better change your clothes, Trudy. <laughs> Dead. Sure you're not. You are awfully sick. I am dead, I say to you. I am dead. Let me help you. How can you help a dead man? Please get up, mister. If you don't, I'll, I'll pull your whiskers. He's up to something, June. Maybe he just wants to visit us. If you go after him, ask him. I told you I already tried to have a talk with him. He refused to see me. Now he's watching us. I don't like it. Now what could he possibly be up to that it hurt? I don't suppose he could hurt you any more than he has. But he'll try. He'll most certainly try. He's hurt too, Dan. Mm, in his pride. He's a mean, petty man, June. A little rancher trying to play cattle baron. Spiteful, vengeful, and frustrated. Please. Please don't hate him, Dan. He's old, and he's my father. I don't suppose I can hate him, dear. Or anyone else you love. Papa, Mama, there's a man on my horse. He's sick. Hurry! Hey, this is the old sheep herder I run off of here yesterday. Well, I hope you're proud of yourself. Here, help me get him on the porch. Did you 
been talking kind of funny. Said he was a great bandito. He wants to kill somebody. What's a bandito? It's a bandit. Some bandit. He ain't nothing but a dirty old sheep herder who ain't worth saving. Who are you to decide who's worth saving? Keep some water, Lynn. After I feed him, the first thing this man's going to need is a bath. Tell me, please, how long I've been in this heavenly bed. Almost a week. Oh, it was such a beautiful sleep. And in it, there was an angel. Someday I must find a way to repay your mother for the kindness she showed me. To wash the dusty hide of an old man. Then you remember everything? Oh, no, not everything. First, there was a small angel. Pull my whiskers. Are you mad at me? <laughs> no. I am always grateful. I'm glad. Are you really a bandito? See, I was. Many years ago, I am known as the Calaveras kid in these parts. Tell me about him. Here's another cup of coffee, man. Thank you, ma'am. Lynn, it's about time the chicken pens were cleaned up. Chickens and pigs, goats and cows. What a way to run a ranch. It's not a ranch, it's a farm. You better get used to that, Lynn. I don't care. I don't want to tend no sheeps and goats. You let that old man Trudy brought home do it. Papa, you don't have to worry about old man Barton anymore. Calavera's kid's going to kill the dirty dog. What do you know about Mr. Barton, and why do you call him a name like that? Well... Len says he's a dirty dog. Len says he hates you and Mama. Does he? Well, he's not very fond of us. Well, anyway, the Calaveras kid's going to kill him. Who's the Calaveras kid, darling? The man I brought home. See, Smarty, he is too a bandito. There is no Calaveras kid, Trudy. There was. But he was killed years ago in Arizona. Now, every year, some glory-seeking stranger shows up and claims he's the Calaveras kid. I'm afraid your friend told you a harmless fib, Trudy. He's just a dirty old sheep herder, like I said all along. I hate you, Len Snyder. Trudy. I'm sorry, Len. I don't hate you, but I don't like you either. And my friend is so a bandito. <laughs> <laughs> Youngsters. I'm afraid that when Trudy finds out her friend isn't a bandit, she'll be as hurt as she was when she lost her faith in Santa Claus. I remember hearing that Father and the Calaveras kid were bitter enemies. Didn't they have a gunfight once? Mm. They shot one another up pretty badly. And Calaveras left and got killed in another gunfight. I wonder. The great bandito isn't even a sheep herder. She's just a goat herder. I didn't think you'd have the spunk to come back here after I run you off. You didn't run me off. I went to the city to earn enough money to buy a farm of my own. I got it now, and I'm staying on it. Please get that through your head, Mr. Barton. I ain't so sure you're staying, Dan Marshall. I ain't so sure at all. It all depends. Father, come on in. I'll fix coffee the way you like it, and we'll talk. Who is this woman who calls herself my daughter, Dan Marshall? I did have a daughter once. She sneaked off and let an enemy of mine make love to her. I wasn't your enemy. 
I just testified against you in a lawsuit. And what's more, I told the truth. He married this man without my say-so. And then went away with him without my permission. Father, can't you ever forgive? Can't we all live in peace and be happy again? Please, Father. Father, I love you. I ain't got a daughter anymore. Who are you? Trudy Marshall. And I don't like you. Well, I don't like you neither, see? You would be a girl. Don't plan on staying around here too long, Dan Marshall. Don't plan on it at all. It might be a mighty dry year hereabouts. Mighty dry. Father? Yes, dear. Then why is he so mean? Oh, it's, it's something that happened a long time ago, dear. What do you suppose he meant by his warning, Dan? That it might be a dry year? I can guess, but I don't think he'd have the gall to do it. What? Well, the creek that supplies us with water cuts into the river on his property. He could throw a dam across it. Oh, he wouldn't do a thing like that. He'd love to do it. Only it'd be illegal and it'd ruin a dozen other farmers besides me. It'd bankrupt them to settle the damage suits. Hey, Trudy. Your friend Calaveras is some bandito. Yellow like a pumpkin. He is not. When he saw old man Barton, he run like a chicken and hid himself in the tool shed. Well, it wasn't because he was afraid. Then why did he? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Calaveras. Oh, go away. I'm dead. Oh, you are not. See, I am. I have that senior Barton covered with my gun. I am ready to call out to him to defend himself. I hear the voice of that angel of a mother of yours, she says she knows. I get weak. So I let him go. I'm glad you didn't shoot him, Calaveras. Now, do not call me Calaveras. Calaveras Kitty would have killed his enemy in spite of the voice of the angel. Ah, the Calaveras Kitty is dead. I am just an old man. You call me Pablo. Well, the old man's done it. Calaveras, will you go for a ride with me? I'm Pablo. Oh, please, will you? I'm dead. How can a dead man ride? I wish you'd quit being dead. I'm... I'm afraid. Afraid? All the animals are dying. Papa said we may lose everything and have to go back to the city. Ah, that senor Barton. He is a devil. And because of what he have done, your mother, perhaps she have changed her mind about him, huh? No, she still loves him. And she do not wish him dead? No. Not one little bit? Not one little bit. Isn't there something that you could do, Calaveras? Oh, call me Pablo. The Calaveras kitty is dead. I can do nothing. We've been getting along pretty well with Mr. Barton. It's only since you came back, Dan, that he's turned mean. Can't you do something about it, June? What could I do? He loves you very much, you know. He's picked a fine way to show it. I've talked to him. His pride's hurt. If only you could find some way to make it up to him, June. 
The only way she could make things up to him would be for her to leave me and go back to him. Yes, I know. Are you suggesting she do that? It might prevent bloodshed. Dan, maybe I should see him. Beg him to... No, don't. Well, we'll have to take matters into our own hands. He's got armed guards. You coming along, Dan? You bet I am. Dan, please. Listen, June, there's only one thing to do now. That's stand up against him. Come on, boys. Hold it right there. That's far enough. So it's you, Halloway. How come you fellows are helping old man Barton with his dirty work? We need the money. You can't need it that bad. Come any closer and you'll find out. Old man Barton's due here any minute. We can wait a little while. I won't miss. Keep your distance. Is Barton there? We want to talk with him. So he ain't. All right, we'll wait a bit. Then we're coming on. And you better not be there when we do. Marshal's brat. What happened to you? Some bushwhacker tried to kill me. Scared my horse. Hey, is there, is there any water in that canteen? Yes. Who tried to kill you? Was it the Calaveras kid? Calaveras kid? He's dead. Stop asking fool questions. Give me some water. Well, hurry up. Come on. What are you waiting for? Give me that canteen. I don't think I should. Well, why not? Well, you've got a whole river, and you won't let us have any water. That's different. Besides, that's none of your business. Now, give me the canteen. No. Did you never learn it's a sin to be stingy? I'm dying of thirst. So are our cows and goats and pigs. I ain't a pig. Here. I'll give you all this for some water. No. All right, then. Get on your horse and bring me some help. No, not now. Well, when, then? I don't know. Is that a nice way for a little girl to behave? What did you learn in Sunday school? What did you learn? Never mind. Well, what will you take for the canteen? Will you promise to let us have all the water we need on the farm? I'd rather die first. Well, that's what our cows and goats and pigs are doing, dying. Hey, young one. You were fooling, weren't you, Trudy? You are going to give me a drink of water, aren't you? If your mother was here, she'd tell you too. I suppose she would. You bet your boots she would. I'm your grandfather. Well, you said Mama wasn't your daughter, so how could you be my grandfather? Oh, that, that was just a figure of speech. Of course, June's my daughter. Little she cares, though. She does care. She's been crying about you a whole lot. She has? She loves you. Yeah, so she says. A daughter who loves her father wouldn't run away and leave him all alone. I heard Mama talking to Daddy. 
Mama doesn't want you to be alone. They want you to come and live with us. I won't be beholden to Dan Marshall. Give me that canteen. No! You don't know what it feels like to be thirsty. I do so. I'm thirsty now. Not as thirsty as I am. Maybe not, but I'm awfully dry. Well, then, why don't you take a drink of water? You got a whole canteen full. It wouldn't be nice for me to drink without giving you any. No. Oh, I'm dying, Trudy. Oh, I'm dying. I, I can hear the rustle of black wings now. Oh, it's awful. Oh, it hurts to die. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Have all you want, Grandpa. Grandpa? I jingled. Here, baby, you drink first. <laughs> well. On earth. Grandpa's hurt. But I ain't dead yet. Not by a jugful. What are you men doing on my property? If it's a fight you want. Why are you standing there looking silly, Holloway? What do you think I'm paying you for? You and your boys help these men break up the dam. Break up the dam? You heard me? Break it up. <laughs> that's great. Hey, that's a thing to do. Oh, that's And I wouldn't trade Trudy for all the grandsons on earth. No, sir. Why, she out-talked me, out-drew me, and out-bluffed me. <laughs> Just as hard-headed and stubborn as her father. And then when she had me licked to a frazzle, she gave me the water. Didn't make me promise anything, neither. No, sir. Just give it to me out of the kindness of a little heart. <laughs> oh, a big 1,000 pardons, amigo. But I live before I say adios. Somebody give me a gun. That man will kill me. You're wrong, senor. I want to kill you, I could have done so today. I had you in my gun sights. Ah, so it was you. Why ain't you dead, Calaveras? <laughs> the Calaveras kid is never dead. I myself spread the rumors that I am dead. So I can get you off your guard. Well, what took you so long? Well, it was complications. First, it was the senorita, and it was the revolution in my country. And he was another beautiful senorita. Well, I can nick you right here and now, busted leg or not. He's my friend. I love you both. Oh, you do, eh? <laughs> <laughs> what is so funny, senor? I was just thinking, Calaveras. What was the name of that girl we fought over the first time? Uh, was Lolita? No, no. More like uh, Carmelita or Conchita. Lolita. Oh, there were so many of them. I do not remember. Life is a joke, senor. Here we are, two old men who have hated each other all their lifetime over a senorita. But our lives ain't over yet, not by a jugful. We got a granddaughter to raise. Then you... You mean uh, I stay here? Please do, Calaveras. For the first time, senor, I hold out my hand to you without a gun in it. You would take it, amigo. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 